All right, guys, Home Depot doesn't offer a lot of high security options for commercial customers. In fact, when you walk into Home Depot and you look at their shelf, you're going to see that the entire wall is dominated by a single manufacturer, and that would be Master Lock. Uh, this is the most popular lock that they sell. Now, a lot of you recognize this as a number three, but oh no, this is the one designed specifically for commercial customers. Not because it's any higher level security, but because it says commercial right there on the bumper. And that is the only concession Master Lock made to commercial customers until today. Guys, things are getting ready to change. And the way I know that is that both the lock picking lawyer and I just received a package of very specialized locks, locks that have been designed for one specific use in the commercial job market. And this is the first one that I'd like to talk about. Now, on the front of the package, I mean, it looks like a normal padlock, but on the front of the package, you notice it says, engineered for job boxes and tool chests. And you might ask yourself, well, what makes it designed just for that? And I questioned that myself. And then I started looking at this and comparing it to some other padlocks. And there were some things that kind of jumped out at me. First of all, you'll notice that the, this is not rounded on it. None of these are beveled. I mean, it's not a sharp edge, but they're not normally, they're, not, they're normally rounded. Not in this case. And I, I had to ask why. And then I took the measurements of this lock. And what I found is that this fits very tightly inside of the Lock Labs job box. And I'll show you that in a minute. I'll do a cutaway and show you how well this thing fits inside of there. It fits so well, in fact, that there's no longer a gap. If we were using a smaller lock, there would be a much larger gap inside of the chamber, which would allow us to stick in a crowbar and perhaps get some leverage on the lock and put some stress on the shackle. Now, previously, the shackle wasn't very large around, but when you compare it to this new one, and again, taking the measurements on this guy, he's just barely able to fit inside the job box opening. Any larger and he wouldn't fit, any smaller and you get a much lower level of resistance to a prying attack. So they made this absolutely as large as they could and of course it's a hardened shackle as well. Um, when we take a look, again looking at the packaging here, we have, and when you look through that I think you can see that there are six pins on that lock as opposed to four pins that we've seen previously. Well, more pins means it's going to be much more difficult to pick. In addition, if you read the packaging, this contains security pins, whereas our previous options had 0% security pins. Very easy to rake open. This one, probably not going to be that way. We've picked pack locks before, and i got to say they're pretty tough locks. The other thing that we have here with additional number of pins, six in this case, we have a larger number of combinations, and so now we get a new guarantee from pack lock. And that guarantee is that they call it the no key interchange, which means there are not going to be any duplicates. And if we look at the number of pins, we know how many cuts on each pin. That tells me right away we can have up to 280,000 different keys before you need to cut your first duplicate. That clearly doesn't hold true when you only have four pins and a lower number of cuts. So great advantage there. When we take a look at the bottom of the lock, we notice a couple of things here. First of all, we have a weather cover. Yeah, a lot of locks have leather covers, but when you take the leather cover and you bend it back, the first thing you notice, this is made from silicone. It's not made from the hard plastic that we traditionally see. So most of the weather covers that I've seen, as soon as you grab them, particularly in cold weather, they get brittle, and when you pry them back to move them, they usually snap right there. So most of them aren't in place. With silicone, you don't have to worry about changes in temperature. It's not going to get brittle and it's not going to fail you. Notice also in the lock we have two little holes drilled here. It leads you to believe, what is that for? I mean, they're threaded if you look in there, but they're blind holes. They go down less than a quarter of an inch. Well, when you look at the silicone cover, flip them over here, they got two little knobs and there's some raised ridges on there. And they're perfectly dimensioned to fit into those threaded holes and those raised ridges engage with the threads to keep a nice solid weather seal on this thing that's very easily removed and slid around, which leads me to the next thing. There's a stainless steel bolt here that holds that silicone in place. And beneath it, if you look closely, there is a wear washer, which allows it to basically a, a bearing that allows you to slide that thing. So not only will it not snap, it also doesn't snag and tear when you try to move it out of your way so you can get your key inside of there. So very, very cool idea on that. Uh, the lock itself, as I said, is six pins with uh, it does contain security pins. 
and it also is a replaceable cylinder. When we open the lock, we remove a single screw and the core comes out. So for me, that's a good thing. My job box actually requires two locks. So I could buy two of these, but they would have different keys. I could remove the core and I could rekey it so they have identical keys. Or let's say I've got more than, let's say I've got two job boxes and a tool chest. Then all I've got to do, go down to Home Depot and right next to these, Packlock is now selling these. Five packs of replacement cores, all keyed the same with five additional keys. So if I'm on a job site and I lose one of my keys, I'm worried somebody's going to find it and sneak up at night, steal everything, within minutes I can go to Home Depot, get replacement cores, remove all the cores, or put them all in there with brand new key, uh, cores, and not have to worry about that. I don't have to buy entire new locks, just new cores. Again, a savings is something that they've put a lot of thought into. So what's it going to cost? I wish I could answer that question, but because it's so new, hopefully by the time you see this video, you'll be able to go to the Home Depot website. It, it Without a doubt, with every all the work and engineering they put into that, all the, all the details, the additional security, it's a premium product. It's probably going to cost a lot more, but yeah. Guys, you get what you pay for in security, just like everything else. And if you're securing $20,000 worth of tool in a tool chest or in a job box, it might be worth investing a little bit more money into the security. All right, I'm going to go ahead and install this into my job box. But before I do that, because it's so difficult to pick, and I'll tell you, it may not be impossible to pick inside of a job box, but it's going to be very, very difficult. Instead, let me find a tensioner. I'm going to pick it by hand and remove it from the packaging. I'll install a job box and show you what it looks like once it's installed. So let me find a tensioner and we'll hop to it. All right, before we jump onto the new standard, I thought it'd be interesting to very quickly pick the old standard, kind of give us a baseline to, to compare the two of them. So this is a standard, the commercial lock I showed you earlier. It is locked. Take my pick, slide them in, and we all know how this works, right? Apply a little tension and then just drag it out. And usually that works pretty quick. If not, there, it worked quick enough. I didn't measure the time on that, but it wasn't very long. Let's see how long it takes to get into this guy. He's got two additional pins. He's got security pins. And it's probably a little bit better tolerance on the lock. Um, I'm going to use top of the keyway on this one because I can. Fits in there very nicely. Try to hold him, I guess, like that. And since I got a premium lock, I'm going to use a premium pick. This is my Rat Yoke Medium Hook. And he's coming back from Taiwan very soon, guys. If you're interested in getting one of these, he'll be home soon. All right, I have light tension. I'm trying to find a binding pin. Uh, feels like pin... Is that pin one? Okay, I got a nice click, and I have a false set now. That was pin three. That was pin four. That was six. Very deep fault set now. That's pin two, and I think we got to open. There we go. All right, now bear in mind, this is in the optimal conditions. I did this on my desktop in the comfort of the lab, and no weather, everything was exposed. I, I could easily get a tensioner up inside of this lock. So my life was much, much easier than if this had been installed uh, on a job box out in the wild. Let me go and install it and give you an idea of how constrained your working area is going to be when this is installed on a job box. All right, I got this thing installed on the Lock Labs job box. And I, I think you'll agree that it fills up this opening much better than its predecessor, that Master Lock, leaving a lot less room for someone to put a cry bar, pry bar and get any kind of leverage on that lock. Also, the shackle on this, you see how I move this, it barely moves. It is literally pinched in there to prevent it from moving around. Really well thought out. If it had been a fraction of a millimeter larger, it would not have fit in that lockdown bracket. The other nice thing I like about this, let me move this out of the way, is that I was able to mount it with the keyway, at least for us here in North America, uh, upside down. So if you really want to defeat North American pickers, this is how you present the locks to them. Because most uh, North American lock pickers, are, they don't practice picking locks in the upside down position. Quite a different feel and a different skill set. 
All right, how does it work? You slide the key in, you rotate it 90 degrees, and the lock will then pop out. And that releases, should release, the locking bar that you see right here. So let me go ahead and lock that back up, slide it on there, and replace the cover. Guys, that is all there is to it. Appreciate your time, stay safe, stay legal, and by the way, if you really want to see me pick this thing in here, stick around at the end of the video, I will do it. Otherwise, I know I'll be hearing from millions of you. Thanks, guys. All right, I'm going to use the long end of this tensioner. Slide it on there. And just hold on to it like that. And I'll use the same pick. And get the right angle. Here we go. Okay, pin one. Where are you? You've got to be binding for me. That was pin four. I'm getting counter rotation on pin two. Come on. So he's a spool. Okay, I got a good fault set going on it now. rotation on five and there we go I think I was only able to pick this because it's fairly flush on here I do by the way practice quite a bit picking upside down but if it had been inset a little bit more I don't think you would have been able to get your tension wrench up the side of there anyway we do have an open uh, no we don't man we got to pick the one on the other side now there you go guys thanks